Hello everyone. In this session, we would introduce the concept of depreciation. When I introduce this concept in class, I always ask this simple question. What comes to mind when you hear the word depreciation? Almost every time, a student will raise their hand and they will say, depreciation is a drop in market value. Great point. This is depreciation from a market perspective. Today, we would learn about a different type of depreciation. It's called accounting depreciation. So let's dive into what accounting depreciation really is and how it differs from the concept of market depreciation. Indeed, market depreciation is the increases in the value of an asset. Accounting depreciation is totally different. Accounting depreciation is a systematic process of allocating the cost that we learned about from the prior asset, from the prior session, the cost of tangible asset over the life of that asset. So when a business purchases a long-term asset, like an equipment, machinery, building, we learn how to determine the cost in the prior session. This asset, part of plant asset, is one of their features is they benefit several periods. And remember, I mentioned this. So instead of recording the entire cost as an expense in the year it's purchased, we take this cost that we learned about in the prior session and we spread the cost over the life of the asset. For example, if we purchase a delivery truck and the company paid $50,000, initially we record this truck on the balance sheet as an asset. And let's assume this truck will serve the company for five years. What we will do then, we'll take the 50,000 and we will spread, allocate the 50,000 over five years. So each year we will expense through depreciation expense, 10,000 of this delivery truck. And this is what depreciation is. Depreciation is that $10,000 that goes on the income statement. Now this matching, we're matching the cost to the life of the truck. This matching of cost to the period in which the asset is used help to provide a more accurate representation of the company's financial performance. Because this 50,000 served in the company over five years, we have to spread the expense over five years. This is a classic illustration of the matching principle. Now, how do we compute depreciation? There are several methods, many methods for that matter. And GAAP doesn't really tell you which method to use. You could use any method as long as it's systematic and rational. We're going to learn about the straight line method, the double declining balance, units of production. There are other methods as well. Depreciation is important because it affects both the income statement through depreciation expense and the balance sheet when you reduce this asset through an account, which we'll talk about in this session, called accumulated depreciation. At the end of this session, as always, I will work a multiple choice question from Farhat Lectures. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Let us start by looking at the factors, at the elements that we need in order to compute depreciation. You need three factors to compute depreciation. Now you could do it with two, but if there's the third one available, you would use it. The first factor is cost. What is cost? This is what we looked at in the prior session, determining the cost of an asset. It's the purchase price plus any additional cost necessary to get the asset ready for its intended use, like transportation, installation, shipping taxes, so on and so forth. This is what we looked at in the prior recording. The second component or the second element is the salvage value of an asset. What is this salvage value? The salvage value is how much we think we can get for this asset. Get means sell this asset at the end of its useful life. How much are we expect to recover when we sell it? Now in the real world, I can tell you this in the real world, 
most companies, especially when I was in practice, they assume this number is zero. And when I looked at this, with this example at the beginning of this recording, I told you it's zero to keep it simple. But we are going to be using the salvage value. So what we need to do, we need to know if there is any salvage value and what do we need with the salvage value. But what is the salvage value? The salvage value is how much the company will expect to get from this asset once this asset is sold down the road. Once that asset serves the company for five, seven, ten years, the expected amount of time. In some textbook, the salvage value is also called the residual value. That's another term for it. Again, this could be zero. This could be some assigned number. The third component is the useful life of the asset. The period of which the asset is expected to serve to be useful for the company. This could be in years. A number of units and hour, hours and hours used for our purposes we're going to look at years and we're going to look at units produced to give you a, a variation of this useful life but mo for our purposes and for a financial accounting student it's mostly time depreciation is computed using the useful life of an asset now this is going to take us back to land Remember in the prior session, I said land is not depreciate, depre does, does not get depreciated, is not depreciable. Why? Because we cannot find, we cannot assign a useful life for the land. The land that you are sitting or standing on right now is there millions of years ago and it will be here for, I don't know, for how long. So land is not depreciable because we cannot assign a life. Land would always service you forever. Therefore, there's no life. Therefore, we cannot depreciate land. Now, we have to have the cost. We have to have the useful life. And the salvage value could be zero. Nevertheless, it's a salvage value. So if we don't have the salvage value, we could always assume it's zero. As I told you in the real world, it's zero. Now, for tax purposes, which is totally different, they always assume the salvage value is zero. But depreciation for tax is totally different than our depreciation, which is which is what? Which is cost allocation. We talked about this in the introduction. The depreciation is a cost allocation. And therefore, it's basically taking the money that we invested and expensing this money over the life of the asset. That's why we need those three. The best way to illustrate depreciation is to take a look at an example. Assuming we purchase an asset, machinery, a vehicle, it doesn't matter, for 12000 This asset has a salvage value of 2000 It means once we're done with it, we're going to get 2000 This asset is expecting to last for four years. It's expecting to serve the company for four years. Also, from a units of production, it expects to produce 20,000 units. And each year we're gonna estimate the following. We're gonna it's gonna produce five thousand units in year one, six thousand units in year two, four thousand unit in year three, and five thousand unit in year four. So total is twenty thousand units. Why do we need this information when we are computing the units of production method? We would look at that. Now we're gonna start to take a look at various depreciation method. As I mentioned, we're gonna cover three. The first one is the straight line method. Let's take a look at how we compute the straight line method. What is the straight line method? And use the data and the example that I provided to illustrate the computation. This method spreads the cost of the asset evenly over its useful life. So I'm going to tell you why it's called the straight line method. Okay? So if we look at a graph, I'm just going to give you an idea first what it looks like, then I will show it to you later. It makes more sense. And let's assume year one, year two on the x-axis, year three, year four. It's going to be the same amount every year, 2,000. Now, year one, you depreciate 2,000. Year two, 2,000. Year three, 2,000. Year four, 2,000. When you draw a line, it looks like a straight line. That's why it's called the straight line, because you are going to depreciate the asset the same year every year. Now, here's what's going to happen. When you purchase the asset in year one, you might purchase the asset uh, not at the beginning of the year, <laughs> so you will not going to have a full year. Under those circumstances, we're going to have a partial year depreciation. We'll discuss partial year later. Also, when you sell, you might sell it in the middle of the year, two months into the year, we'll have a partial year. But that does not negate that 
it's called the straight line method because the assumption is you are depreciating the same amount of money every year relative to how long you had this asset so to compute the depreciation the, there is a formula and the formula state you take the cost of the asset when you determine the cost minus the salvage value of any dividing it by the useful life now if you want to compute the life in terms of years you divide by the years in case you want to compute it for a partial year then you would compute it monthly so if it's a three-year asset three times 12 equal to 36 so the denominator is for 36 month but if you want to compute it yearly you will divide by three depending on which period you are computing depreciation for for the purpose of our example our asset has a cost of 12 self salvage value of 2 now if we take 12 please listen to me carefully minus 2 will give us 10,000 so the cost of the asset minus the salvage value will give us 10,000 this is called the the depreciable base what is that what is the depreciable base the depreciable base is the maximum amount you can take in depreciation for this asset why because you cannot depreciate the 2000 the salvage value is not depreciable so the maximum you will depreciate is 10,000 now copy this number down you're gonna see it again so how do we compute the depreciation using the straight line method we'll take 12,000 for computing it for a year divide minus 2 which is the depreciable base of 10,000 divided by 4 every year we are going to take 2,500 for this asset in terms of depreciation so from a journal entry perspective what do we debit and what do we credit when we book this depreciation we debit depreciation expense credit accumulated depreciation we talked about this in the past but I cannot trust that you remember accumulated depreciation is a contra asset so the accumulated depreciation asset to the asset that's accumulating now year after year we book the same entry if it's the straight line now we need to talk about something we call the book value the book value is cost minus any accumulated depreciation for example for this asset here we started the cost of 12,000 this is how much it cost us minus the first year of depreciation we say the book value of this asset book value after one year is 9500 so what is this book value and this is an important concept we need to know inside out especially when we dispose of the asset the book value is how much is this value how much is this asset worth according to the accounting numbers according to the books it's the cost minus any accumulated depreciation not any minus accumulated depreciation on the balance sheet we would still show the asset which is the machinery or whatever that asset is minus less accumulated depreciation and on the balance sheet we would show the book value of the asset of 9500 now obviously after another year we will have 5000 Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. Which of the following best describes the useful life of an asset? Best describe. Is it the productivity of an asset as long as it's less than a year? Well, if the asset is less than a year, <laughs> it's not long-term asset. Uh, we don't use useful life. We don't use depreciation. This question, this answer does not make any sense. B it's not related to its physical life there's nothing wrong with this answer um, the useful life of the asset is not related is not related to its physical life Th that could be partially true it's true it's not a bad statement but don't choose that statement until you look at the, all the others because here they're asking the best the estimated life, the estimated time of productivity of an asset is this what I said about the useful life I would say C matches what I told you the useful life of the asset is how much this how much time this asset will produce how long it will produce for the company it is partially true it's not related to its physical life sometime the asset might become obsolete it, it physically 
but it might produce like it's 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 old but it could be still producing and vice versa it could still be in good shape but not producing because it lost utility there's a better technology so it's not related to its physical life true but the best described is the estimated time of productivity of an asset it's determined by law law has nothing to do with the useful life when it comes to tax it's determined by the tax law but this is not this is not a tax course so the best answer is C what do you need to do you really want to learn depreciation very well go to farhatlectures.com work additional MCQs that's gonna help you be more confident be prepared for your class invest in yourself accounting is worth it Farhat lectures is always here to help and stay safe